there's some cold air building across Alaska. Some of that's going to try to slip down into North America. We're going to talk about that, plus a little bit of snow in the forecast. It's in the long range, but we're going to talk about how November could be one of the coldest starts we've seen in several years. And we're not talking about decades. We're talking about just going back maybe to 2019 or so because it's been pretty warm over the last couple of years. This is the upper level temperatures. This is looking at about 5,000 feet. We talked about this yesterday, this grayish line. That's your temperatures uh, above this level at 5,000 feet or below freezing. And it's a good way to show where the cold air is that's not impacted by the warming and cooling of the day. But I want you to note how this piece of cold air breaks off and moves here into parts of the Great Lakes, also into the southeast as we head into next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This right here, guys, could initiate our storm that we're looking at next week that could try to tap into some of this cold air and bring it south as we head toward the middle and the end of next week. It could even bring a chance for some snow across parts of, I don't know if we're going to get into the Appalachians. Still a lot of questions, maybe even in two parts of the northeast. And this might bring a setup where we pull a lot of cold air down into parts of the Great Lakes, the central U.S., into the east. I think it's looking more and more likely for the eastern U.S. because on the back side of this, and really the flip side, if you will, we're going to have sort of a ridge building up here across the southwest. A lot of questions still. I do want to show you something that I think is interesting. This is a look at sea ice that's in the orange. This is last year. The reason there might be more snow last year compared to now, although we flipped, right? We had more snow earlier in the month. It's been colder over here. You've had a really chilly dome of high pressure that's been dry. Think about it, guys. The Arctic is almost a desert, and if you can get a lot of dry high pressure set up, you're not going to get a lot of snow. So more snow on the ground, but look at the difference here. Just to the north of Siberia and the north of Alaska, the ice cover last year and this year. It's a little bit further south. One of the reasons I think that you're going to get more cold air that's going to survive longer as it moves across the North Pole from Siberia and over toward Alaska because it's not going to have to freeze up more water. That's going to put a little more cold air into North America. We're starting to see that already. It's really cold and stormy across Alaska. That's going to continue as we head into this Thursday and then across the Great Lakes. Showers will stick around here as this cold pool of air moves across. Showers on the increase as we head into Friday across the Central Plains. A little bit of snow and rain into Colorado. We're going to zoom in in just a second on all these areas and detail it out a little bit more. I do want to take a big picture look at things and show you where the main players are going to be heading into the weekend. Rain and snow moving into the Pacific Northwest. This is going to really pick up as we head toward the 25th, 26th, and 27th as these snow levels drop and the rain increases across the Mississippi Valley. High pressure keeping things relatively dry across most of the east. Maybe a few showers right along the coast here, but rain chances do increase as we head into Monday here from the Mid-South and now into the Mid-Atlantic and into the Southeast. Rain and snow continues across the Northwest. And into parts of Canada, we have a chance of some snow, maybe a little bit here into parts of Alberta, Saskatchewan, back into British Columbia. That snow is going to continue into the mountains. I don't know if we get the snow into Calgary, but maybe up towards Edmonton as this system wraps up. And then across the east, we're watching the tropics out here for this system. And now you've got a piece of energy right here, diving south out of Canada. The question is, how is all this going to interact with what's happening maybe out here at sea? Are we going to end up seeing an area of surface low pressure develop right here along the southeast coast and move north? The latest GFS runs have said, yes, we're going to see that. It's been consistently trying to show a little bit of snow here into the mountains, the Appalachians. Still, I'm not 100% sold on this because the European is quite a bit warmer than this, but it still has these features, just a little bit different looking. We're now looking at a week away, so let's watch this closely. But this is developing a really strong area of low pressure, putting some snow even into the northeast. And then it stays stormy here across the west into parts of British Columbia. Now, as far as the southwest goes, everything north of you guys, if anything, we're starting to see this ridge build trough. Are we looking at a really unsettled time here? And this would be a cold again start for November. We see warm air building back in. I don't think it lasts. Anyone who thinks it does, no, it's November. It's not going to stick around forever. But boy, it's interesting to see this cold start. And look how active we start to get here across the prairies. Maybe more snow on the way for you guys. There's been a little more snow last year than this year, but that might change. Just a quick look at the European, by the way, for this East Coast storm next week. Look, it's a lot different looking. I'll be dialing it in, watching all of this over the next several days. Look at the cold. This is the European AI. What do you notice? Troughiness, right? You can see this digging here into a lot of the east, at least over the different 50 members. This is the mean, so you get an idea of where that's showing up. I love tracking winter weather. If that's your thing, 
come back, subscribe. If you're brand new, thousands of you have just joined the channel. I used to be a chief meteorologist years ago. I worked in the TV business, been out of that for a long time. So if you enjoy winter weather forecasting, following the little nuances, I hope you'll subscribe and come on back. Let's look at the east. We'll zoom in here and we'll work our way across the country. High pressure keeping us mostly dry, at least across the southeast through Thursday into Friday. A few showers may be mixing with snow here into parts of the northeast. That moves away as we head into Saturday. Surface high pressure building in across the Hudson Valley. Return flow on the backside of this bringing some moisture up from the Gulf. So rain chances going up across the deep south as we head into Saturday also into Sunday. This cold high pressure sticks around here into the Northeast. Temperatures a lot chillier the further north and east you go. On the back side of this, rain chances going up across Virginia, West Virginia, down into the Carolinas, into the Southeast, and this moves toward the coast. Yesterday, I said this, the GFS, I just think it's a little too aggressive with the cold. It's got a different look for some snow, trying to show up in the highest elevations here into parts of West Virginia. Yesterday's run, again, much colder, much different looking. It's holding this upper level trough back a little bit more today and it starts to swing it through as we head into Wednesday. It's still there. It's still showing a storm developing and this if anything is pretty strong here for the Northeast. That would be a big wind and rainmaker with some snow into the mountains on the back side of this. Still again a long way to go. The European has a different look to it. So more to come on that. Let's go back toward the plains where the rain is going to be increasing as we head into Friday. Now as for Thursday dry across most of Texas heading into tonight the rain chance is going up across parts of Oklahoma especially southern Oklahoma then it spreads into the rest of the state also into Kansas some high elevation snow back into Colorado that pulls east as we head into Friday there could be a few strong storms today and tomorrow across parts of Texas and Oklahoma and then this moves east heading into Saturday Temperatures on the way down behind this. It's not going to be super cold. Maybe a little bit more rain and snow across northern Colorado into Wyoming. And then another system starts to plow to the east. This is that upper level piece of energy that will drive to the east heading into the middle part of next week. The problem is the energy that's going to form this storm is still across the North Pacific as we head into Friday and Saturday. I think as this moves ashore, once we get toward the weekend, the models will start to have more data. Out here across the ocean, there's very little data getting plugged in. There's more here across North America, more surface stations, more weather balloons going up, so the models do a better job. Across the west, it's going to be stormy across the Pacific Northwest with snow expected here in the mountains of British Columbia. Rain coming down in Vancouver, Seattle, Portland, the rain on the increase, snow into the Cascades. It could add up in the order of feet over the next couple of days, especially here in the British Columbia, down into the Cascades. We'll start to see that snow pick up as we head really into the weekend. And once we get into Saturday and Sunday, those snow levels come down and then more snow into interior areas. Not nearly as much though, as we're seeing across British Columbia. A quick look back at the surface map. There goes the storm inland with that cold air loft, snow levels coming down. We'll see snow into Idaho, Montana, and then that drives east. There's the piece of energy we're watching next week for areas further to the east. Temperatures today relatively mild. We're in the 80s across the desert, so it could be much hotter. So we're starting to feel that October cool down. Very pleasant across the southwest. Vegas looking absolutely beautiful with temperatures. Much more tolerable than your midsummer heat. Here comes the cold, though, moving into the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures on the way down into the mountains. Highs much colder heading into Sunday.